Good evening, Simon here, Explosive Action, and I'm back with a metal CD update for February 2022. Got a stack here, so let's take a look. In the background, we are listening to the live execution from Gutless. Live album, of course, was recorded in Northcote down in Melbourne. Uh, it's got uh, one, two, three, four, seven tracks listed on the back there. Take a quick look inside. There's the band and inside stuff. So yeah, very cool. Really nice, clear recording. Tight, punchy, death metal, out of Melbourne, gutless, awesome stuff. First CD we're gonna take a look at came out in November last year, only just got it. This is a new band and I believe it's pronounced VAR, V-A-R-W, maybe it's VAR, not too sure. I think it's got a sort of a Celtic origin in the name. But anyway, this is Aussie Black Metal. Uh, yep, there you go, Aussie Black Metal. That's what this is. Uh, is. Is that enough? Anyway, opens with an acoustic intro over some, you know, rain, that kind of, you know, almost cliche thing that you hear in a lot of atmospheric black metal bands. Um, but then it's just Raging Fury, Australian black metal from that point on. It's another project from uh, Balam from Pestilential Shadows, Drowning the Light, uh, Rookwood, and another recent band called Rift. There's the back. Um, and on guitar, bass, and drums, there's another guy. His name is uh, Grillac, I think is how you say it. He's on ra ra sort of raspy, uh, echoey vocals. Kind of Lamp of Murmur, actually. Um, reverb, guitar, and vocals. Like, it's all kind of echoey in there. Um, it's really organic sounding. Really cool. Um, it's got some restrained moments as well. Make it a bit more... Yeah, it's not all Blitzkrieg. Like, it, it slows down, has some more um, thoughtful passages to it. Uh, it's got some D-beat stuff as well. Take a look inside. There's the guys looking very necro. Um, yeah, more acoustics. It's got more intros and, you know, those bits with the rain and all that kind of thing. It's, it's just a nice atmospheric black metal. It's like atmospheric with the asterisks. Like, it, it's mainly just black metal, but it has some of those atmospheric sort of bursum -y things going on as well. But really has a lot in common with Pestilential Shadows. Very similar in sound, um, which is why I dug it so much. Um, there's a track in here called uh, Anka Ankau. A-N-K-O-U, Ankau. Uh, very rewarding build-up. Has the dual guitars from both members. Fast drums. And then it has like this... It sounded like background choir vocals. I really couldn't quite work out what was going on there. And just sort of culminates this big crescendo at the end. Instantly sort of just stops on a dime. It's really quite a... I was listening to it and just... Uh, it was just sort of happening like it was just taking me on a bit of a journey I was listening to it. I didn't realise that I was sort of like drifting off I suppose as listening to it like in a good way. And I just, I just noticed at the end it was just building and building and got really big and yeah, it was really impressive. So I really, really dug that track. The last track as well uh, is uh, Yan Gant Yatan. Again, it's probably a Celtic thing. Um, has a really fantastic main riff. Kind of reminds me of uh, 1349's Hellfire. Remind me a bit of that. Um, the song is sort of half sung out in like a boomy voice like, uh, you know, Esan might do, uh, you know, Ino Asatana, like, yeah, has, <laughs> has that going on, uh, which was cool. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, it's definitely got similarities to like Pestilential Shadows. So if you like your Australian black metal and you like the stuff that Balam does, you're definitely gonna like this one from VAR. Came out on uh, Dark Advert, Adversary limited to 300 copies. I got mine from Seance Records. Definitely worth checking out. Next one we have had a bit of hype around it, no denying that. This is Warflurch with Psychedelic Realms of Hell. Great name. Um, it's such an advancement from their demos. That's the first thing I'll say off the bat. Um, at its core, it's this murky death metal that, um, you know, fans of Cerebral Rot, you're going to get into this, but, you yeah, know, in the Symphonies era carcass, there's a lot of that in there as well. But way more refined sound than they had on the EPs and the demos. Um, adding some sort of retro uh, electronic weirdness, sort of some synthwave, robotic voices and things. Like it's, this looks like the coloring. It's got, it's got this sort of gory thing going on here, but then it has that psychedelic pink and green. And you know, you've got you know, 
galaxy in the background, like this astral thing going on. That is definitely everything that is you're hearing in the album. You get the murky, slimy, gory death metal. You get the psychedelic colouring there that you know adds that weirdness to it, and it's very spacey. The whole thing feels and sounds very spacey. The first track's called Celestial Mycelium, so you know celestial, um, and. I don't remember that being so prevalent on the, the EPs and the demos. Like it's still got like heaps of palm muted, muted uh, like chugginess. Um, you know, but it's supplemented with a lot more time ghoul. Uh, and you know, for a modern band like Universally Estranged, I hear that kind of stuff going on with Warforged now, which I just was not expecting with this full length. Um, and just, just when the band you think like any other band of this style could just go full suffocation they just get to that point and just stop dropping like an astral synth bomb and just gets weird and yeah i thought that's just great but it really works really well um got some soaring solos they're quite tasteful kind of progressive not that shreddy um particularly the first one i think it was on the first track it's quite a, a sort of a slow moving solo i thought it was really quite nice um and yeah there's just way more beneath the surface here than you might expect from a band that had an EP called Shit Slime. You know, it's Psychedelic Realms of Hell out on uh, personal records, highly recommended. Next one we got some Russian death metal from 2020. This is Womb Ripper um, with macabre melodies, not even pretending to not be inspired by the great Swedish bands from Stockholm. They're not hiding it, that's what they're going for here. I've said before that the, the Swedish um, Sort of HM2, like there's so many modern bands doing that and it gets a bit samey. Why I quite like this one, instead of being so heavily inspired by Left Hand Path, which you don't really hear on this, it's more like, um, well, really if you have a modern band compared to it, it's like Swedish band Lick, like L-I-K. Lots of similarities to them, um, but I think for something older, mid-era Dismember from like the death metal album Hate Campaign, that's what you get here where it's it's lost that evilness from like an ever-flowing stream in pieces, like that evilness is gone. It's just fast and harsh and HM2, dial to 11, just riff, riff, riff. It's really, really good. Um, yeah, it's got that ferocity of like the crown from Death Race King. That kind of thing is belted into this. Um, and you know the melody from Slaughter of the Soul, like it's all of that kind of Swedish style stuff, but it's coming out of Russia. So yeah, I thought this was really good. Um, fast and aggressive, but just not evil sounding like early Dismember, not like early Grave, mid-era stuff. Um, this is the second full length, says the band on the back. Um, have a couple of EPs and demos, so you know they're well established. It's out on Memento Mori. And um, yeah, that's about all I can say. Nothing you haven't heard before, but it's a, a really good mix of you know, the mid-era Swedish sounds. There you go, Wim Ripper. Next up we've got Altered Dead with Returned to Life, also on Memento Mori. Down-tuned, filthy death grind two-piece from Canada. Sounds a lot more filthy than the sort of the colouring on here might suggest. It is pretty murky, very dissonant stuff. Um, lots of autopsy D-beat, but also has some grindcore tropes, like a bit like you hear in the background here, where he just sort of has that pause, does the four count, but then where Gutless just went in with a the groove, these guys would go in with a blast. You know the classic grindcore sound. Um, plenty of that, but also heaps of murky, doomy, sludgy passages as well. It's death metal all around the gambit. It's just every aspect of death metal here, but rooted in chunky, darkness reminded me of incantation of course you can't escape that um, second track uh, return to life starts off dead said it starts off with the exact same riff and drums as human remains uh, track wrote apps like it just was the same riff totally the same riff maybe a little less weird as that track does and that band do but it was the same riff man um, <laughs> hell of a coincidence if it wasn't uh, but really good, and the final track um, slows down. It's like it's called "Of the Oppressed," and that's that's track nine. It sort of slows down to a real murky crawl, ends into like a feedback loop of static. Um, would have been a really nice fine ending, and then go bang. Oh, we're going to do Celtic Frost cover into the Crypt of Rays. 
but yeah, okay, look, it's a, it's a staple, it's a decent cover, but I kind of preferred how the album just ended. It's, you know, it had a natural conclusion and then they bung the cover song on the end. So, you know, it's fine, but it, it disrupted the flow a bit. Um, but anyway, yeah, good, good stuff. Dissonant Death is really what you're getting here, but with all of the classic the autopsy murkiness and, you know, a bit of grind in there as well. So, very good. Uh, 2021 release on Memento Mori. And uh, there's the CD. Bit of lyrics there, so yeah. And it's um, only about half an hour long, which I think is a good length for the kind of material you get here. It doesn't overstay its welcome. Just a nice little album. There you go. Altered Dead, Return to Life. A couple of updates ago, I was thrilled to finally get a copy of Adelaide band Dark Lord's debut album, Symphony Satanica. And I was just very, very lucky to pick up uh, a couple of weeks ago the just as rare demo CD that came before it. Uh, this is By the Force of Sacred Magic Rites. Look at that logo. My God. Look at the back of it. It screams cult and necro. But, so, okay. This is even more brutal and guttural than the first one. I talked about that, that uh, album, uh, an update, maybe two updates ago. Can't remember. Um, and that's, I remember saying at the time, it was sort of like a mix between Infesto and like early emperor or something it, it went from brutal death metal ripping shredding solo and then atmospheric black metal with keys and those sections didn't combine they were just they were like mini songs unto themselves it was really really interesting on this ep or demo which came out in 1993 this is pretty early they're not so much onto the black metal yet this is just brutal guttural death metal some of it's just nearly grind um, but it is dark. It is very dark and suffocating. It really is. Um, six tracks in under 10 minutes. So that tells you about, you know, the style you're getting here. You're getting these sub two minute long, just heavy, blasty, dark, still evil sounding tracks, but it's not black metal. It really isn't there. It's, it's just like dark and evil death metal. Um, you could tell where they were, where they were going where it was going to go um, after this one. So yeah, there's uh, not much more to say. It's only six tracks in 10 minutes. Um, it still has that infested sound, but they're just shorter and grindier tracks, sub two minutes long, and not so much of the black metal. So there you go, there's the inside with the very cult looking font and the logo and uh, the tracks on the back there. So yeah, that's all I can really say. Dark Lord by the force of the sacred magic right. Next band really don't need much of an introduction. Everybody knows of Skinless Regression Towards Evil. Um, US Brutal Death Metal. The album was originally called Progression Towards Evil, came out in uh, 1997. Uh, this is the 2007 reissue that comes with uh, both the 1995 demo called Swollen Heaps, what a great name, and the 1994 Untitled demo. So you get a bit more bang for your buck on this one. Um, I did have the album back in 1997, 1998, I got it around about then, but I think I must have got rid of it in the trade when I was going through a, um, you know, this duh, duh, death metal, really dumb stuff is not what I want. Eh, we go through phases. I very much like the dumb death metal a lot these days. Um, it's for fans of, you know, stupid, offensive, gory death metal with intro songs, you know, intro, like, samples that are just offensive. Um, for fans of like early, you know, dying fetus, internal bleeding, you, you all know Skinless, but um, for me, this is the only material I want from the band. The album after this, and why I think I probably got rid of everything, I had two albums after this one, and um, they were just nowhere near as good as the debut. Like, they started to get more relapse record sounding, and they eventually did join relapse. Um, it just got too clean and the fun was gone and they eventually got more and more technical and that's not what I wanted from a band called Skinless so yeah for me this is a great collection of everything that I want from them uh, the progression album which is really really holding test of time for me and the first two demos which are just murkier versions of the uh, of the album so yeah really good stuff regression towards evil uh, the 1994-1998 collection of Skinless Next one we have here is Blood Ritual at the Mountains of Madness. Really cool cover on that one. Uh, I can just about get away without having to cover it up, so that's good. Uh, 1997, this one came out on Moribund Records, and it is just 
satanic death metal that you would expect from Moribund. Like, it sounds exactly like you would think a late 90s Moribund band would sound like. Uh, blasphemous, straight ahead death metal, dual demonic vocals taking center stage, you know, one gurgly sort of down the pits, one raspy one, just like, you know, Deicide Legion kind of era. Um, you know, brutal, catchy riffs, good solos, great punchy drums with fat double kicks, really, really fat double kicks. I love the sound of the drums on this. Um, the bass is felt and sometimes heard, not so much on, say, like the first song, but uh, the second track, uh, Sanguine Deity, I assume that was what it was, um, or is that Ancient Rites? I can't remember. Anyway, whatever. Uh, the second track on here had some, like, bass galloping. It started to get a little bit more, like, death going on there. I thought that was kind of cool. So if you like bass, it is in here uh, at times. And, um, yeah, it sort of sits in the um, you know, second Vital Remains album sound, um, early Asheron, Dementor out of Slovakia. You know, all of that just 90s to board, like, right on the year 2000 satanic death metal. It's bang in the pocket of that stuff. Really good. I've never even heard of them before. Um, label mates drawn and quartered. Another example, I think. Get kind of blasty as well. There's the inside bit with the uh, sigils and pentagrams and all kinds of occultness going on there. Um, Aussie band Killin' God. We've got a, such a great name. Um, yeah, that would also be a similarity, I think. So yeah, formed in 1991 actually by the main dude called Tim Bishop who is, or was, I'm not sure if he still is, a member of the Church of Satan. So there you go, a bit like Asheron in that regard. So yeah, cool. Blood Ritual at the Mountains of Madness, the only album I think they did. I think I'm right on that. And uh, yeah, definitely worth, worth, definitely worth your time. Here's a really killer slab of death metal out of 2001. From Texas, this is Reign of Terror, uh, Threnody of the Impaled. I'm not sure what a Threnody is, but it has been impaled, whatever it is. The only album these guys did, um, it's it's like everything you'd expect from a 2001 death metal band who did not go down the Zyklon or Behemoth path. It's uh, got the immolation, sort of evil groove and the guitar squeals, plenty of blasts. Um, pretty much all the tracks, this is, this is what I found really interesting about it. Pretty much all the tracks have like a breakdown into New York brutal death metal, suffocation, chugs, you know, goes into that for like 16 bars and then goes back to the blast fest of just satanic death metal. So it's, you know, it's a real interesting mix, I think. The uh, the third track, uh, hilariously called Sado Sodomite Communion, brilliant stuff, um, it has a second breakdown, like, it's like deathcore I'm talking about here with all these, uh, these things. It's more like a beat down because that one just goes dun 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 and you're just waiting for this pit of, like just the circle it's just one of those build ups and then it gets into the you know the chug over the the fast double kicks and that's it like there's so much space between the riffs brutal death metal but look at that cover look how evil and mighty it is like there is that that total like it's been washed with black metal just just you know, washed over it, and that's what you get here. It's like a satanic version of skinless. That's what I got out of this. It's like a blackened edge when it gets fast. When it gets fast, it's it's got that black metal tinge to it. When it gets slow, it has that New York death metal chugginess going on. So it's a really cool mix, I think. Um, really great meaty production. Reminds me of uh, Eternal Suffering, another good brutal death metal one and done. Uh, they're out Drowning in Tragedy. And I love that there's a song on here called Excavating the Frontal Lobe of Jehovah. That is a sensational song title. So there you go. Reign of Terror, Threnody of the Impaled. I love that cover art. It's just so like cartoony, just a little bit immature. Awesome stuff. So Ben Brainsmasher reminded me of this 90s Melbourne band uh, in one of his recent videos with their debut album called uh, they ris whispered you had risen. This is Cryptal Darkness. Um, I had this back when it came out um, and You know, I, I traded it on eventually because this style of um, Sort of like third and fourth album My Dying Bride the real sort of gothic tinged doom metal quite clean with the violins and that kind of stuff it 
really wasn't what I was looking for at the time. Not at all what I was looking for at the time. So I got traded on and I actually forgot all about this band. Um, they stopped being a thing anyway. So yeah, that's Cryptal Darkness and that was this album. But um, when uh, he showed his video and I thought, no, I'm going to give them another go. And I found a seller that had this album and this one, which I'd never even heard of. It's just called uh, Chapter 2, The Fallen. Didn't even know this was a thing. Um, it's the same as They Whispered, but more. And firstly, if you want to go hear more about They Whispered, go watch Ben's video. But as for Chapter 2, um, overwhelmingly still inspired by mid-90s era My Dying Bride, like Angel in the Dark River, that kind of era, um, which is not surprising because Martin Powell from My Dying Bride does keyboards and violins. So if you're a big My Dying Bride nut, go check out Cryptal Darkness, both these albums, because you're not going to be disappointed. But um, this one, I think, actually, Chapter 2, I'm, I'm much preferring. It's, it's a heavier but also cleaner sound. It's crisper, better produced, just better produced sounding than the debut, um, with really long, like, eight, nine-minute long songs. And they're not boring. They're quite well thought out, will really well articulated um, doom metal songs. Um, big chunky doom riffs over like mid paced double kicks or just really slowing down the drums to that almost funeral doom in some some part, uh, parts of the songs, but really it stays in that straight ahead doom, gothic doom. That kind of that kind of uh, feeling to it. Um, the bigger production here really helps them sort of ape more the the band that they're trying to sound like, which is My Dying Bride. Like on on the previous album, it sounded good, but this one just really knocks it out of the park. And it's a shame that the band collapsed after this. They actually became another band, um, a band called The Eternal, and I think they're still going. But that dropped the doom and became really quite gothic metal, you know, a bit frilly, a bit frou-frou. Here it's still got meat, it's still got some balls to it, it's still got some heaviness. Um, lots of extra flourish I found on this one than on the previous album, so some Spanish guitar, a uh, bit more grandiose keyboards, probably down to the production. Um, and moments of um, Amorphous's Elegy album, which was probably about around at the same time, I think they would have just come out about the same time as this. Um, 2001, no, it was a little bit earlier than that, so I reckon there was a bit of listening going on to Elegy that got into this, uh, for sure, not just the My Dying Brown, um, but yeah, that sort of comes across in the faster parts, which were never actually fast, it's still Doom, but just the faster parts of this album, so yeah, really good, and uh, that's all she wrote for Cryptal Darkness before they went on and changed the band name. That's all from me today. Hope you enjoyed this CD collection update. If you did, please like, subscribe. Check out this thing and this thing, whatever they may be, and I'll see you next time.